Hello friends, in this figure I'd like to solve the following problem from the Romanian International Mathematical Olympiad Team Selection Test, year 1978, problem number 17. Let n be a positive integer. Solve the following equation, cosine of t times cosine of 2 times t and so on, cosine of n times t plus sine of t, sine of 2t and so on, sine of nt equals 1. It's a nice trigonometric equation. Here are my hints. First, consider separately cases where n equals 1 and e n equals 2. And for n greater than or equal 3, uh, use the triangle inequality. And also notice that both sine and cosine are bounded. They are between minus 1 and 1. Because we are talking about uh, real uh, real numbers. Yes. And once you get some results, remember to verify them. And crucially, <laughs> this little identity will be immensely helpful. Cosine of alpha plus minus beta equals cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus or plus. So if we have plus here, we have minus here and vice versa. Sine of alpha sine of beta. So give this problem a try and I will see you in just a minute. Okay, so my solution. Let's first check cases of n equals 1 and 2. Case number 1, n equals 1. Well, then our equation, <coughs> our equation becomes cosine of t plus sine of t equals 1. And now we can do a trick. I will multiply both sides by square root of 2 over 2. And notice that cosine of pi over 4 is exactly square root of 2 over 2. Likewise, sine of pi over 4 is also a square root of 2 over 2. Very well. Now on the left hand side, using uh, the last formula which I hinted at. Here we have cosine of t minus pi over 4 equals square root of 2 over 2. And now what angles, cosine of what angles gi uh, give us uh, square root of 2 over 2? Well, either, either this angle is minus pi over 4 plus 2k pi or t minus pi over 4 equals plus p over 4 plus 2k pi, where k is obviously an integer. So we can write t equals uh, 2k pi or t equals pi over 2 plus, plus 2k pi for some integer k. Okay, second case, case number two will be easier. Case number two, n equals two. Well, now our equation is cosine of t, cosine of two times t plus sine of t, sine of two times t equals one. Again, we can use our formula. On the left hand side, we can write that we have cosine of 2t minus t equals 1. It fits with our formula. So in other words, cosine of t equals 1. Well, as that happens, pretty easy to see, that happens when t equals 2k pi or some integer k. So we have yet another solution. And now, gen the general case, when n is greater than or equal 3. That's the interesting case. Okay, we have the following. 1 equals cosine of t, cosine of 2 times t, cosine of 3 times t, and so on, cosine of n times t, plus sine of t, sine of 2 times t, sine of 3 times t, and so on, and so on, 
sine of n times t. And I can do the following. First of all, notice that we can estimate this by the triangle inequality. We can estimate some of these numbers as cosine of t. Not yet. We are not yet using uh, triangle inequality. We are just saying that number is less than or equal absolute value of this number, which should be obvious. Okay, and now I will make use of another of another clever estimation. Well, notice that absolute value of cosine 3t and cosine nt, sorry, sorry, the final one should be cosine nt, where they are bounded by 1. So it's less than or equal, just cosine of t, cosine of 2 times t, plus the absolute value of sine t, sine 2 times t. And now notice the following, that here we have two numbers. Uh, they, are, they can either be positive or negative. Basically, this type of inequality is true, that it's great, less than or equal cosine of t, cosine of 2 times t, plus or minus sine of t, sine of 2 times t. It's true because, for example, for, let me give you an example. When this number is positive, and this is positive as well, uh, we choose plus here. Well, if this is positive but this is negative, we just choose minus here to cancel two minuses, and so on. So this is true, definitely. And now, by using once again our identity, this right here is cosine of, maybe write it in orange, why not? This is the absolute value of cosine of 2t minus or plus t. So it's either cosine of t or, or cosine of 3 times t. Let's consider these cases separately. So first case, uh, 1 is less than or equal cosine of 3 times t. Is it possible? Well, notice that it's impossible for cosine to be strictly greater than 1, so it must be the case that cosine of 3 times t is exactly 1, which means in turn, which in turn means that t equals uh, 2k pi over, uh, sorry, to be, to be completely right, here we have absolute value and here we have absolute value as well, so it's t must be k pi over 3 for some integer k. But now let's verify it. Now notice that if t is of this form, our number cosine t, cosine 2 times t, cosine 3 times t, and so on, up to cosine of n times t. Let's take a look. The first number is cosine... Basically, here, the first few numbers, here we have something like uh, cosine of pi over 3, cosine of 2 pi over 3, and cosine of pi. So it's like 1 half minus one half and minus one minus or plus one and notice most definitely the absolute value of this entire thing is most likely less than one obviously less than one because we have we, we are not not just having only pluses or, or minus ones so and notice also that sine of t sine of 2 times t, sine of 3 times t, and so on, up to sine of n times t, it's zero. Because uh, the third number, this number right here, is sine of k pi, and sine of k pi is zero. And now we see that, in fact, that means that our equality is not possible. 
so cosine of t, cosine of 2 times t, and so on, cosine of n times t plus sine of t, sine of 2 times t, and so on, sine n times t, cannot be, cannot be 1, cannot be 1, because this part is 0, and this part has absolute value of less than 1, so no solutions here, no solutions. Unfortunately. Now, second case, we have second case where 1 is less than or equal cosine of t in absolute value. Well, if that is the case, that means that cosine of t in absolute value is exactly 1, which happens, which implies that t must be some multiple of pi or some integer k. And now, let's, uh, first, let's add a new page, because I need some space. Now, let's see. What is sine of t? So, basically, now we have to do some kind of verification. If every result of this type is valid. Notice that sine of t, sine of 2t, and so on, sine of nt, every term is zero, so this product is definitely zero. And also, let's call, so let, let's call for the sake of brevity, let cn be cosine of t, cosine of 2 times t, and so on and so on, cosine of n times t. We just want this to be equal to 1, and I will consider two subcases. Uh, so let's call it maybe 2.1, case 2, subcase 1, t equals 2k pi, or some integer k. Well, notice that then cn equals, here we have cosine of 2k pi, 4k pi, and so on. So it's 1 times 1, and so on, a bunch of 1s, which is 1. Our equation is satisfied. So, every, so our equation is, in fact, satisfied. Very well. Now, subcase 2, so case 2, subcase 2, <laughs> t equals pi plus, plus 2k pi, or some integer k. What now? Well, now notice that our number cn, first we have cosine of this number, cosine of this number is minus 1. Then we have 1, then we have minus 1, then we have 1, and so on. It's alternating. And actually, the sign of this expression depends modulo 4, n modulo 4. So we have another few another cases. Well, n modulo 4 equals 1, n modulo 4 equals 2, n modulo 4 equals 3, and n modulo 4 equals 0. Let's consider them separately to see what do we get. First case, we have 4k plus 1 terms. So our, our product is minus 1, it's like the first term, or it may be to be completely clear what I'm doing. Because notice, I, I can make some type of table uh, of partial sums. First partial, partial product. First partial product is just minus 1. The second partial product of my sequence is again minus 1. Then I have minus 1 times 1 times minus 1 as well, which is 1. Then I have minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, which is 1 again. And repetition begins. 
repetition begins. Then I have another minus one, then I will have another one, and so on and so on. It should be pretty visible that it depends modulo 4, as I stated. Actually, if n modulo 4 equals 1, we are in this type of case, or this type of case, if you will. Our result is minus 1. c of n equals minus 1. If we have two terms, again, it's again minus 1. It's something like that. Then we have 1, and then we have 1 as well. And then we have 1 as well. And now we see that our equation, in fact, can be satisfied, but only when n modulo 4 is either 0 or 3. So maybe let's write it. If n modulo 4 is either 0 or 3, then our equation is satisfied by t equals pi plus 2k pi, where k is any integer whatsoever. And now let's combine all of it together. Let's write our final answer. So final, final, final answer. Final answer. If if n equals 1, we have seen, if n equals 1, let's go back. If n equals 1, what solutions do we have? 2k pi and pi over 2 plus 2k pi. Two k pi or x equals pi over two plus two k pi. K is any integer whatsoever. Well, if actually we can combine case of two with cases of n greater than or equal three, because if n is two, notice that two is congruent to two modulo four, so we can so we have no solution of this kind, we have just solutions of 2k pi. So we can write it as if n is greater than or equal to and n modulo 4 is either 0 or 3, then we have 2k pi or then we have, to be honest, k pi. Let's write it briefly k pi where k is any integer whatsoever but if n is greater than or equal to and n modulo 4 is either 1 or 2 then numbers of this kind do not satisfy our equation so we have x equals 2 k pi where k is any integer whatsoever. And that is our result. It depends on the remainder modulo 4 of our number n. Yes, and that's it. It's a pretty nice problem, I'd say. Pretty nice trigonometric equation. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.